Hey guys, it's Weaver. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna discuss the Pimax 8KX and VR performance or the frame rate you get when running VR games and VR simulators on the Pimax 8KX. Well, this is a highly discussed topic. The most frequent or common question online is what GPU do I really need to run the Pimax 8KX and is the current generation of Nvidia graphic cards, the RTX 20 series, enough to run most of the games and simulators on the 8KX. So for today's video I have tested and benchmarked 20 different VR games and simulators and I have recorded everything. I'm going to show you real-time frame rate, frame times, GPU utilization and much more. And I hope you're going to find this video helpful. So please watch the entire video that would really help me out. Also, Thanks for subscribing and a bigger thanks to all my Patreon supporters and my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. So now, guys, I've talked too much, I know. Let's jump into the VR benchmarks. Let's start off with Skyrim VR. With in-game settings set to high, the in-game super sampling set to max and no anti-aliasing used because you actually don't need that with 4K resolution, the game runs very smooth in 75 frames per second most of the time. Some minor frame drops can occur in some intense scenarios, but overall Skyrim VR is a super smooth experience on the 8KX as long as you have an RTX 2080 or a 2080 Ti. I won't talk too much about every game, so let's just jump into the next one, Onward. Onward runs pretty smooth with basically maxed out details in-game and low anti-aliasing. Well, why? Because anti-aliasing is barely needed anymore with running the game in 4K per eye resolution of the 8KX. Of course, different maps can give you different results and in heavy online matches you might need to lower some settings to get a full frame rate, but overall Onward is a perfectly smooth experience on my 8KX every time. Now Pistol Whip. Pistol Whip is more like Beat Saber kind of game. It's not very GPU or CPU demanding, but still it needs a stable frame rate for maximum immersion of course. There are very fast movements, so it needs a stable 75 frames per second. My RTX 2080 Ti has no problems running Pistol Whip with default settings on the Pimax 8KX and the experience is smooth as butter 75 frames per second just as expected. Well, now let's try a simulator, shall we? This is iRacing, one of the most popular racing simulators. Running maximum settings in-game, I get a smooth 75 frames per second race without any frame loss. Of course, it's only a practice run and not a full race here what you're actually seeing in this video, so expect slightly more GPU and CPU utilization when doing races, especially online, with many opponents. Although, I don't think you should worry about iRacing and performance on the Pimax 8KX, at least if you have an RTX 20. TI. Note that I'm using Paro projection here which is required and therefore I have decreased the super sampling to just render the simulator in as close to native 4K resolution as possible. So why not just go with another VR simulator? Airfly FS2. This simulator runs like a dream on the 8KX and looks really beautiful in 4K per eye. This has been our main demo simulator during our US roadshow and also during VR days last year. And that's for a good reason. Stable and smooth 75 frames per second rate almost the entire time wherever you're flying. If you circle around San Francisco in downtown, you might see some frame drops running on max settings, especially on max ultra settings. Settings, but that's really nothing to worry about and you can always decrease the amount of buildings and trees to get rid of that problem. Now Arizona Sunshine, one of the most popular VR games yet today and in this test I'm running the original first campaign in one of the first moments of the game. I get a perfectly smooth 75 frames per second frame rate and no problems whatsoever as far as I can tell. The game is super sharp and looks amazing in 4K, almost no aliasing at all and as you can see you can probably bump up the resolution or super sampling even further because the frame rate is really stable. Atex Cybernetics is one of my old favorite VR zombie shooters. I'm very surprised this game actually runs in smooth 75 frames per second on the Pimax 8KX considering the amount of anti-aliasing being added and the game engine it's using. 
The in-game render scale is at 1.0, but it's very sharp and I could barely see any frame drops at all. Even in very intensive action scenes when many zombies are just coming right at me. Now another simulator, my favorite Assetto Corsa. This is one of those VR racing simulators that simply runs super smooth on the 8KX in native 4K resolution, even in large field of view actually. In this test, I was just running the normal field of view on 150 degrees horizontally, and with 12 opponents, I had no problem maintaining the maximum frame rate in a single player race. The game is maxed out in the settings, except for post processing, which I turned off as I don't really like how it looks in VR. Next up, Boneworks. It's not really a GPU demanding game, I have to say, and even when running this with anti-aliasing instead of the new VRSS feature, the game runs mostly smooth in stable 75 frames per second on the Pimax 8KX. Of course, it all depends on the scenario or map you're playing, but remember that enabling VRSS makes it even more smooth, because it's less GPU heavy than using anti-aliasing which is built in into the game. And I am using the normal anti-aliasing in this video. Contractors is another first person shooter I like and this one just looks beautiful and runs most of the time in a stable 75 frames per second on the 8KX with native 4K resolution. Not much to say here I would say, it looks beautiful, it's smooth and there's almost no moment at all where I found I got any stutters or any judder or any reprojection. And there's plenty of GPU and CPU headroom for more, so I guess you can super sample a lot more in this game and still maintain a stable frame rate. Carnage Chronicles is another great looking VR game made in Unreal Engine. The game runs mostly smooth in 75 frames per second, but in intense action you might see some frame drops here and there, especially since the amount of monsters and spiders and creatures can be quite huge once you get hunted by all these creatures. Either way, a great experience on the 8KX with the RTX 2080 Ti and most of the time it feels just butter smooth. Now it's time for another racing simulator, R Factor 2. Since this simulator has no longer the need of parallel projection, it's easy to get it running in a smooth 75 frames per second frame rate, even in races with 15 or more opponent cars. It may not be the most beautiful racing simulator out there, but it's a very popular one as far as I know, and I hope this brings some good news for the R Factor 2 community that the 8KX and an RTX 2080 Ti can actually handle it quite well. Well, just for fun, I also tried 11 table tennis on the 8KX to see how it runs and feels compared to my last video when I was running it on the 5K Super in 180Hz. I gotta say, 75Hz or 75 frames per second is no problem at all for this table tennis simulator and I had no issues at all keeping a stable 75 frames per second frame rate during my match versus the PC. Next up. Pavlov. You probably know already that this first person shooter has no problem to maintain a good frame rate and with the 8KX I feel I can super sample it to crazy levels until I see any kind of frame drops in a single player match. At default graphical settings and almost maximized in-game super sampling, Pavlov runs butter smooth in 75 frames per second on the 8KX and by the way it looks amazing. Now Subnautica. Well, this game with the implemented VR support is not really the easiest game for the GPU to handle, especially with the native 4K resolution of the Pimax 8KX and the parallel projection enable on top of that, which is a requirement. I must say though, I'm quite surprised I could run it in an average of 60 frames per second on the 8KX. It actually feels quite smooth, even if it's far from perfect, of course. It's definitely fully playable and depending on where you are in the ocean, you might even see the game to run in 75 frames per second frame rate quite smooth, in some moments at least. Another favorite of mine is the game In Death. Not so surprisingly maybe, this game is running in a stable 75 frames per second frame rate on the Pimax 8KX without any problems using my RTX 2080 Ti. I could not feel any frame drops whatsoever and if there was any, I'm sure I must have missed that. 
A very smooth experience overall and on top of that a lovely sharp one. Note that I was not using the VRSS here, but only the built-in anti-aliasing which actually is more heavy on the GPU than VRSS, so you can probably squeeze out even more performance of this if you run with the VRSS feature. Super hot is a fun game I gotta say, and well I know it's not so heavy on your GPU, but I just had to add it. And again it runs like a dream on the Pimax 8KX in a native 4K resolution. It's sharp, it's fast and it's stable 75 frames per second and it makes the game easy to play this way. I bet you have never seen super hot looking as good as this. The game Budget Cuts 2, which surprisingly haven't got much attention online lately, seems quite poorly optimized just like the first Budget Cuts title. Despite being a Unity game, I wonder what really went wrong here. It's difficult to maintain a stable 75 frames per second on the Pimax 8GX and many times the frame rate is down to mid 50s or around 60 frames per second. Having that said, it feels fully playable on the 8GX and I had no problems with the minor reprojection while playing. Zero Caliber is one of those more GPU demanding first person shooters again. I remember playing it on the 5K Plus and never really reached a stable frame rate. Here on the 8KX I have to say it runs surprisingly good after all and the reprojection is barely noticeable. Most of the time the frame rate hovers around 65 frames per second, sometimes up in full 75 frames per second, but most of the time below 70, which is not bad after all considering the native for resolution. Now I know what you've been waiting for, Elite Dangerous. This simulator is actually a little bit tricky to benchmark, and native 4K resolution including parallel projection makes it both fully smooth at times and less smooth at other times, at the same time depending on what scenario you're playing it might differ a lot. Having in-game settings and super sampling at default 1.0, the average frame rate is somewhere between 65 and 70 frames per second. On some of the scenarios and maps and matches, it really runs fully smooth in 75 frames per second, while in other scenarios the frame rate goes down to 60 or 65 or so. Remember that I am recording this at the same time and you can expect another 5 or 7 frames per second without recording your gameplay when playing Elite Dangerous. Ok guys, I know what you're thinking now. I must have forgotten something, right? Well, here comes a bonus. Digital Combat Simulator 2.5 or DCS World 2.5. I will dig deeper into this simulator with the Pimax 8KX in my upcoming videos. As I said during the US Roadshow, I will get some help from my friend Matthew Hines that can make wonders for this simulator. He knows everything about tweaks and performance increases in Digital Combat Simulator with Pimax and during the US Roadshow he got it running fully smooth on a 2080 Ti with the Pimax 8KX. But for today in this test I just used the default 100% super sampling in SteamVR, in-game super sampling of 1.2 and medium to high details in-game without any anti-aliasing added. During a free flight in the free aircraft Su-25T I had an average of 63 or 65 frames per second, which is not mind blowing but very very playable and immersive enough. In some moments Digital Combat Simulator actually runs in a stable 75 frames per second but remember this is only a free flight and missions are more CPU and GPU demanding of course. All in all, DCS has never looked so beautiful as it does now with a native 4K resolution Pry and if you have an RTX 2080 Ti, you will have no problems entering this air combat simulator on your Pimax 8KX. Ok, I would like to clarify a few important things here. First of all, yes I am a Pimax employee, so yes I know you won't trust me even if I said that the Pimax 8KX is the best and the most sophisticated VR headset on the market. Well, I work for Pimax so I understand that you might think that I'm biased. That's why I prefer to do videos like this that gives you facts and benchmarks which cannot be emulated or lies or generated in any way. This is the numbers that I get by running these games on the Pimax 8KX and an RTX 2080 Ti, whether you like it or not. I have no opinion about this, I just want you to know about the performance of this headset. So I really hope that we're clear on this point now, okay? Next, 
My PC rig. I think a lot of you don't know about my PC rig and the specifications. I'm running an RTX 2080 Ti. It's overclocked by default from factory and I also overclocked it a little bit extra in the afterburner. I have an Intel i9 9900K processor and 32 gigabyte of RAM memory. Furthermore, as you probably know already, the Pimax 8KX has dual 4K panels, so it's rendering a native 4K image per eye, which is quite a lot of pixels to be rendered. It runs in a maximum of 75Hz refresh rate in a native 4K per eye mode and up to 120Hz in the upscale mode. In this video, we are only using the native 4K mode though. The officially recommended GPU for the Pimax 8KX is the RTX 2080, so not the 2080 Ti. But remember, this is only recommendations, it's not the requirement. You can run this on 1070 even, it even runs on my 1070 laptop, although not with the best frame rate. So I really recommend you something around 2080, 2080 Ti or worst case maybe a 1080 Ti. All the tests are made in the normal field of view of Pimax, which is 150 degrees horizontally or 170 degrees on the diagonal side. In all of the tests I'm using the default PyTool render quality of 1.0, which gives us a native 4K resolution of roughly 3800 pixels horizontally and 3200 pixels vertically. And yes, I know the vertical amount of pixels is a little bit too high, right, for 4K. Well, that's because Pimax headsets are using extra amount of pixels on the vertical side for the distortion profile, so those extra kind of 1000 pixels are needed for the distortion profile to correct the whole image. The games that do not use parallel projection feature has SteamVR super sampling set to 100% at all time. And the games that uses parallel projection, I have adjusted the SteamVR super sampling to 72% to render a native 4K resolution per eye, roughly 3800 pixels horizontally. And now remember, I have not done any tweaks whatsoever in these games, any special tweaks or so. Most of these games have default settings and some of them have even higher settings because I think they deserve that running in 4K resolution. And lastly, remember that I'm recording all this simultaneously on the same PC and the recording of the VR view with OBS gives me an average of 5 to 7 frames per second less compared to playing without recording it at the same time. So have that in mind. So after seeing 21 games running on the Pimax 8KX with an RTX 2080 Ti, what is the conclusion here really? Well, I'll leave it up to you because because you know why, right? Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down here below. And I will do a part two, maybe a part three and a part four of this benchmark video. So if you have any suggestion of what VR game or simulator I should try with the 8KX and my RTX 2080 Ti, let me know in the comments down here below and I will follow up this with another benchmark video. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one. Cheers.